South Bay is the southern end of Lake Champlain, and from here north to Putnam Station, the lake looks like a narrow canal. Lake Champlain South Bay is nestled between Lake George to the west over the ridge behind the diameter and the Green Mountains of Vermont to our right and in the distance. North of South Bay, we see the lake's canal-like look. This will continue north to Putnam Station, where the canal-like lake becomes a slightly wider lake up to historic Fort Ticonderoga. The Champlain Canal, connecting South Bay and Lake Champlain to the Hudson River, was dredged in 1823 from Putnam Station north of here, south to the Hudson River at Fort Edward. The Hudson River connected the Champlain Canal to the Erie Canal, providing a connection from Lake Champlain to Buffalo, New York, and the Great Lakes, and south via the Hudson River to New York City. The Chambly Canal in Quebec connects Lake Champlain's north end with the St. Lawrence River. Historically, these canals and their connections attracted populations for commerce and provided an easy path for settlers to Ohio and further west. The South Lake Champlain Corridor is a broad floodplain, extending to the sides of the valley bottom, bounded by steeply rising terrain or bedrock on the Vermont side and the railroad on the New York side. White channel markers remind us that this is an operating canal. Shallow and deep water marshes are present on both sides of the river in this floodplain. Notice the golden brown color and some cutoff ponds to the left of the railroad. These areas are also part of the floodplain and flooded during periods of high water through culverts underneath the railroad. Notice the clarity of water in the marshes and floodplain ponds and the pond cut off by the railroad. The opaque channel water shows suspended fine sediments like clays and silts from surrounding agricultural activities churned up by the wind. The particle size is so small that sediments don't readily settle out with current or wind disturbance. Algae is also present along the channel sides from agricultural fertilizers. A lens of morning clouds causes us to fly over Vermont farmland for several miles. This southern section of Lake Champlain is bordered by farmland and forest on both sides. Farmland is common along both the Vermont and New York shorelines of the lake up to the Canadian border except at the two northern Lake Champlain cities of Burlington, Vermont and Plattsburgh, New York. The lake's narrow navigable channel widens a bit after Pulpit Point, a local landmark. The dredged portion of the South Lake Champlain Canal ends in the distance as the lake widens into a narrow lake. The Champlain Hills to the west of Lake Champlain all the way to the Canadian border have remarkable biodiversity and are the richest forest and ledge communities in northern New York, with the most ecologically specialized species and more rare plants than any other Adirondack plant community. The West Champlain Hills community has over 170 ecologically specialized species that do not ordinarily occur in northern forests, and at least 70 species that are largely or completely restricted to this community. Rare or uncommon here is Drummond's rockcress. Plentiful here, but rare elsewhere, are shagbark hickory and woodland sunflower. Many of the rare species are at their northern range limit, drought tolerant, and require lime or are limited to limey soils. Eight Champlain Hill species rarely seen are the shrubs leatherwood and fragrant sumac, and plants, purple clematis, field chickweed, Limber Honeysuckle, Bicknell's Geranium, Allegheny Vine, and Douglas's Knotweed. The Champlain Hills are some of the Adirondack's most important forest landscape and its only true biological hotspot. They should be protected. Passing Chipman Point and its marina, we start to see the historic features around Fort Ticonderoga. Mount Defiance is on the New York side and Mount Independence on the Vermont side. The fort is on the point of land projecting from New York side beyond both mountains and alongside the mouth of the La Chute River, Lake George's outlet into Lake Champlain. 
Fort Ticonderoga was constructed by the French in 1755 to 1757 during the French and Indian War. The star-shaped fort was located to control trade between Lake George and Lake Champlain at a time the English controlled the Hudson River Valley to the south and the French controlled the St. Lawrence River Valley to the north. The British captured the fort from the French in 1759, only two years after it was built, occupying it until it was abandoned in 1781. Except for two years, the Americans captured it in a surprise attack to obtain the fort's cannons which they transported to Boston to repel the British in the War of Independence. Flying north from Fort Ticonderoga, Lake Champlain widens a bit more, and we see farms and forest landscapes on both sides of the lake. We pass the small and historic Ticonderoga Ferry, connecting the Lake George region of New York with the Middlebury and Green Mountain regions of Vermont. This service may be suspended, so wise to check. The large international paper mill north of Ticonderoga dominates the western shoreline of Lake Champlain with its large buildings, smokestacks, and a large tree storage yard. Notice the clarity of water alongside the shoreline and the discoloration in both the main lake and the paper mill's channel out into the lake. Lake Champlain's clarity begins to change as we travel north from the international paper mill. The more intense agriculture seems to be on the Vermont side here due to the more forested and mountainous terrain on the New York side. This heavy farming may be contributing to the opaque suspended particles we see in the lake. Lake Champlain has 51 identified aquatic invasive species and 10 of concern, including zebra mussels, Asian clam, spiny water flea, Eurasian water milfoil, and water chestnuts. Switching from the Vermont side, to the New York side of the lake, we see farmland leading to Bullwaga Mountain to the west. Bullwaga is one of the Champlain Hills we noted earlier for rare or unusual plant species found here. Bullwaga is also an important landmark for migratory birds like hawks and a place where grassland birds can be found in a forested landscape. Coot Hill, at the north end of this ridge, is famous among bird watchers as a place to observe migrations. As we approach Bullwaga Bay, Note the clarity of water in both the cutoff pond alongside the railroad and the main lake. This is the southern end of the larger portion of Lake Champlain. The lake seems to be more clear here now that we are well north of the international paper mill and concentrated ag runoff into the narrower southern lake below Crown Point. Crown Point is the site of another of Britain's forts, although it was originally built by the French and raided for its cannons by the Americans to use in defense of Boston. North of the Crown Point Bridge, Lake Champlain extends to the Canadian border and beyond, becoming a very large lake, dominating the landscapes of northern Vermont and northeastern New York.